You still blush too easily when confronted. I'm sorry. And apologize too easily as well. I, uh, indignant? The Stormlight Archive. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots, I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. I could not pass up the chance to include a Stormlight Archive quote, especially this one that so beautifully shows a character who cannot stop apologizing. And that is what we want to cover today for the emotions, is that guilty and apologetic feeling. The guilty and apologetic character can be one that you can think you're writing it differently than your readers are reading it because they don't get to see the body language as much unless you explicitly put it out there. It's very easy to think, well, they apologize, so they must be in the wrong. There are a lot of ways to write this character incorrectly, but today we're talking about the best way to write it unapologetically. But um. If you are writing a character who sees this other guilty or apologetic character, then they are going to often describe that character as blameworthy or in the wrong. It is their fault and they should pay for whatever it is that happened. If your point of view character is the one who is guilty and apologizing all the time, you will say a lot of words like sorry or feel that shame, regret them being contrite, talk about being deserving or not deserving of things, depending on how good the things are. They're very self-conscious kinds of characters who are very aware of stepping on people's toes and apologizing even if there might be a chance of having accidentally offended someone. And I think that's another way that characters can view that apologetic character is as annoying. If they are apologizing too much or for the smallest things, It can come off as being like, okay, they really don't need to apologize for everything. So to understand this guilty apologetic feeling, we need to look at the antonyms. This is your pride and your extra confidence. You might even see some forgiving type characters, which you'll see as sort of an antonym to the guilty character but also happening at the same time. The ones who feel guilty and are apologizing constantly will also be very forgiving of everyone else. You can also have the characteristic of never apologizing, even if you know you were in the wrong, because that would be seen as weak or unbecoming in some kind of way. So they guard and protect it out of the same kind of insecurities, but for a completely different outcome. One of the easiest ways to approach this apologetic kind of mood or character is to look at their root emotions. Of the basic four, I think it's pretty obvious sadness is going to be that root emotion, but it's not a crying kind of sadness. It's very rare that you see someone who is apologetic and tearful, but there is still that sadness surrounding a particular event. It might be an ongoing, repeated particular event, but it's a particular event. The other root emotion that it could be is some form of anxiety. These are your characters who tend to over-apologize. Whether or not they actually did something wrong and should feel guilty about it, they are anxious that they are doing something to harm or offend or otherwise displease people around them. And there's a lot of trauma usually wrapped up in that kind of a thing. I do want to draw a parallel to the episode before last when we talked about vengeance. Vengeance and apologetic personalities are two sides of the same coin. You're either experiencing some event and you're lashing out, getting even, or you're becoming more and more contrite and taking all the blame often to try to smooth things over. Also keep in mind that this is often the chronic hero syndrome, where they have a vast feeling of insufficiency in the task that they are about to take on. So they feel a lot of guilt that for whatever reason in their past, they're not going to be able to defeat the big bad evil guy. A lot of your heroes have a little bit of that chronic hero syndrome, 
they feel guilty for the bad guys' crimes because they didn't stop them before they were committed. And that is a good segue into the precursors, not the emotions, but the events that lead the characters to feeling guilty. If you're talking about your main character, this is something in the MC's past that can be sorted into one of two categories, either active guilt or passive guilt. Active guilt is when they made a choice and now they regret it. They regret what they did. The passive guilt is when they didn't do something and they feel they should have. Something else to keep in mind, one of these necessary ingredients for having a guilty character is a different character who was wronged. There is somebody else in the mix. Guilt is a very social emotion. So if your main character is spending their entire life out in the woods, they're going to feel a lot less guilt for bumping into somebody than somebody who is constantly surrounded by people and trying to win the approval or avoid pain from the people around them. If you choose to use the guilt, especially in your main character, that guilt needs to spur more positive actions and results. They feel bad they didn't do something, so now they're going to act and work so that they don't make that same mistake again. Something else you need to keep in mind as you're writing this character is it isn't always obvious that guilt is what's causing these changes in your character. Oftentimes, you have guilt presenting as lashing out, as anger, even avoiding certain kinds of situations, or accusing other people of the same crimes that they themselves feel guilty over. This goes kind of back to last October, but when you are projecting on somebody else, that is another facet of guilt to consider. Also remember the timeline of the guilt. If you're writing a child Their timeline for guilt is often going to be really short, in part because their memory isn't super great, but also because they haven't had time to fester on something for years. But as you get older, as you grow into an adult, your character is going to develop. They may hold on to a guilt and let it fester for years. It could give them crippling anxiety that they apologize over and over for. So I feel like we have a good idea of what a guilty character is experiencing, the types of words we can use, the types of ideas. How do I portray it in my story? Your character is going to have tells. General common tells that you can include are something like avoiding eye contact, keeping their posture hunched and making themselves as small as possible, keeping their hands very close to their body and to each other, maybe wringing their hands or clasping them really tight. Really anything tense in the body. But with that tenseness comes an extreme stillness. They're trying to have the smallest footprint socially so that they can not have any more to apologize for. And they may be slow to show any kind of emotion, but especially negative emotions. They don't want to be seen as a bad person, so they don't want to show sadness or anger or these other kinds of things. They may tend to be overtly happy or sarcastic and making jokes and comments to lighten the mood so that nobody recognizes the tension that they're experiencing. If the guilt is part of the lie that your main character believes about themselves, especially if this is a guilt that has been festering for a long time, know and introduce, especially in the first act if you can, who the other party is, who the offended party is that is causing all of this guilt, and why your main character cannot get forgiveness from them. Either that person is dead and it's the main character's fault, so they cannot get forgiveness, They're really far away. The other person refuses to give forgiveness. All of these things will help spur your character's choices moving forward because of their past trauma and make it very clear how guilty the character feels. And I would recommend if you are going to include guilt as part of their character, you need to include an end to that guilt. Either they need to learn to forgive themselves or that person offers them forgiveness some kind of resolution to the guilt so that they can be free enough to defeat the bad guy. 
This can even be a mirrored scene from the one they feel guilty about so that they can make a different choice, make the better choice because they're guilty and because they learn from their mistakes. Generally speaking, your main character will find resolution for their guilt and a side character will not find resolution for their guilt. In order to have that resolution play well, you need to know whether or not that guilt is justified, whether they actually did do something wrong or whether it is something that they can learn. They never did something wrong. It was just bad circumstance, whatever, that led to what they feel guilty about. Some of those physical expressions of guilt that you're going to see from your point of view character would be that twinge of guilt whenever something reminds them of the thing they're guilty of. Maybe a gnawing guilt or this constant burden on them. It can also come in the form of nausea or they start to feel really hot. Their skin gets warm, especially around the neck and cheeks. And a lot of the physicality of your character is going to center around those cheeks and your gut. Those are your two primary locations. With sign language, they actually also include the shoulders in that because guilty gets paralleled with burdens. So your character might have their shoulders forward and hunched and very closed off and protective. But your cheeks and your gut are going to be the two main things that your character is going to see or feel that physically show guilt in the character. So while you may write your characters to be guilty, you don't have to feel guilty when you write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.